Today's lecture is on pattern recognition. So pattern recognition is a field by which a uh, field of study by which patterns and data are found, recognized, and discovered. And it usually aims to classify data based on a priori knowledge or on statistical information. So the patterns are to be classified are observations. So these are usually put in the form of vectors in a multi-dimensional space. And then what we want to try to do is classify those vectors into one or two or more patterns or uh, labels. So often classification is based on a set of patterns that have already been classified by a person. This set of patterns is called a training set and this strategy is called supervised learning. But learning can also be unsupervised in this case, there is no training set. Instead, the system establishes the classes itself based on the statistics of the patterns. Some good resources in pattern recognition. Um, the statistical toolbox in MATLAB is very good. Um, some good journals that often have topics on pattern recognition include these. And um, this is a good book on machine learning and pattern recognition by Bishop. Uh, it's a recent book, uh, I believe 2010. So several approaches uh, we can classify for pattern recognition. One is statistical. So we assume that the patterns are generated by a probabilistic system. And again, as I mentioned, the data is reduced to vectors of numbers and statistical techniques are used for classification. Another general approach is called structural. And here we, we have data that can be converted to a discrete structure, such as a grammar or a graph. So an example might be representing the three-dimensional shape of a person in terms of uh, arms, legs, head, etc., torso. And the relative relationships um, are links in a graph. So then um, classification on a new instance um, can be done using methods such as graph matching. Or another general approach would be uh, parsing if we represented our, um, our class using a, a grammar, a formal grammar, then um, we could use uh, that type of method for matching. And the third general approach, which we're not going to cover here, is neural, where we have a neural network that simulates the behavior of a biological neural network. So first I'm going to talk a little bit about unsupervised pattern recognition, where we don't have training data. So the system must learn the classifier from unlabeled data. And it's similar to the problem of estimating the underlying probability density function of the data. So imagine your data had uh, two modes in the PDF. And your system then might recognize that and, and um, treat those as two classes in the data. So under some approaches to unsupervised learning. Um, Clustering is a general approach, and we're going to look at uh, k-means clustering. And then dimensionality reduction in general, using methods such as principal component analysis. So first I'm going to look at k-means clustering. So here we're given a set of n-dimensional vectors. We also specify k, the number of clusters. And then the algorithm partitions these vectors into clusters such that it minimizes the sum over all clusters of the within cluster distances. So here's an example of some vectors in two dimensions. And here are the centroids of these three clusters. So if we've clustered correctly, then the distances of these points to their respective center is uh, a minimum. If one point was uh, clustered incorrectly, for example, to this one, then the overall sum would be much larger. So 
k-means algorithm is fairly simple. We start with a set of vectors. We randomly choose a set of k-means as the center of each cluster. For each vector x, we compute the distance to each center or mean. We assign x to that center. And then we go ahead and we update the means. Assuming that we have the labels correct, we recompute all the cluster centers. And then we repeat steps three and four, basically first assigning um, vectors to clusters and then updating the means and just repeating that over and over until there's no more change in the cluster centers. So k-means is guaranteed to terminate, but it may not find the global optimum in the least squares sense. So often um, a good heuristic is to restart k-means at multiple random places um, to avoid the, any local minima. Let's do an example of um, index storage of class color images using k-means for that. So um, we saw the, the use of color, um, color images expressed in terms of RGB, red, green, blue. Eight, if we used 8 bits for each of those bands, then we have 2 to the 24th possible colors. But most images don't use this entire space, so we might be able to get by with fewer discrete colors. And this is where k-means clustering comes in. Uh, we can find a reduced set of colors that represent the image fairly well. So here is a input image using the full color space, and here is an image the same image where we have chosen only 32 discrete colors. And it's actually a fairly reasonable approximation. So um, the way index storage works then, it, it's a very compact representation. We, we find our set of discrete colors using k-means, and we put those colors into a color map, essentially a lookup table. And then for each pixel, we just store the index into that color map. So here's a image where we're displaying the indices, in this case, 64 different indices into a color map. And here is the image rendered using those colors that are looked up by those indices. Um, so exploring that a little bit more, that image here um, has a color map that looks like this, the first couple colors here. Um, here is a small portion of the image of indices, and as you can see, um, we have index 17 um, stored there. So to display that in the correct color, we would go to index 17 in the lookup table and extract the red, green, blue values corresponding to that pixel. So those are the colors that we display for that pixel. So this is a much more compact way to represent color images. Instead of uh, 24 bits, we would use simply 8 bits per pixel, plus a little bit of additional storage for a color map. Um, in the MATLAB image processing toolbox, there are several functions that um, deal with this. Um, RGB to IND to index and index to RGB that would convert back and forth between the full RGB image and a indexed image. Um, and then the image can be stored with its color map, um, in which case we can retrieve it using this syntax. And to display it properly using a color map, we use imshow with the image name followed by the color map. 